Right. Okay. So I'm Katri Hjovan Asikainen from the U UIT, the Arctic University of Norway. And I'm going to start with a uh, brief history of the Sami people. So a little bit yes, background. I'm just listening to talk. Sorry. Hmm, I heard some sounds. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Sami are the only indigenous people in Europe. And all Sami uh, languages are considered to be endangered to different degrees. So some, like all of them are um, endangered, uh, but some of them are like uh, even uh, extinct or almost extinct. Uh, the traditional territory of the Sami comprises the northern parts of um, the Nordic countries here, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and also uh, the Kola Peninsula in the Russian far uh, northeast. I'm going to show a map in a minute. Um, the Sami languages can be actually considered to, uh, to be 10 separate languages. Uh, a list is shown here and the unders underscored uh, ones are uh, ones that have written standard and bolded are uh, those who are um, or which are official or have official status in Norway and then without Der and Akala, they, they don't have written standards. Uh, Akala is actually extinct and Der is almost extinct and so far. Um, Inari and Skolt Sami languages are uh, spoken in Finland and Russia. Uh, Gildin only in Russia. Uh, and altogether these languages are approximate to have 24,000 speakers in all four countries and in uh, and North Sami is by far the biggest of these. So 15,000 uh, is only North Sami speakers. Uh, and uh, generally all Sami speakers are bilingual or even multilingual in Sami or uh, Sami and one or uh, more majority languages. Uh, then some, um, some more. Um, so as I said, three of these languages have official status in Norway. Uh, these are marked here in the map with um, S, uh, L, and N. And P and U are Pita and Umesami. They are like very, very small languages uh, that have like a couple of hundred or a couple of dozen of speakers. So they are a little bit uh, difficult situation. Uh, in 1992, uh, uh, the Sami Act of 12th of June uh, 1987 received additional provision of use of the Sami language in Norway, stating that Sami and Norwegian are equal languages. Uh, this is very important because this, uh, in theory at least, uh, would grant the Sami languages to be like that, that they, they can be used in all official contexts and like anywhere. Uh, and well, that's what we are aiming for. And the Sami administrative area currently includes uh, 13 municipalities in Troms and Finland, uh, Finnmark, Northland and Trondelag, which are uh, the three northernmost county municipalities. So uh, situated here in the, uh, in the map in the northern areas of Norway. Uh, and I work in a group called Divun uh, or Giela LT. So uh, we develop language technology for low and extremely low resource languages. And we have do tools uh, varying from dictionaries to text to speech at the moment. Uh, this has been uh, on for 20 years already. Um, and the framework we use is freely available from, from this link at GitHub. Uh, and we have uh, not only the Sami languages, but also uh, other small languages. And altogether, 100 languages are added to our framework of different kind of uh, text processing tools and such things. Uh, most of these tools are still knowledge or expert or rule-based uh, and use FSD because for these kind of morphologically rich languages as the Sami languages, uh, FSDs 
kind of give a lot of control uh, for the paradigms. Uh, but for speech technology that we uh, currently work with, or I, I work with mostly, um, of course, we uh, use data-driven approaches and machine learning. Um, yeah, and besides TTS, so text-to-speech, we have also experimented with some ASR as well. And here's a, like a screenshot from our website uh, to just demonstrate what kind of tools we have available. So uh, the address is divun.no and we have proofing tools, keyboards, because uh, many of these Sami languages and also other languages, they, they cannot be written with standard uh, keyboard, but they have a um, varying amount of special characters. And we want to make sure that it is uh, as easy as possible to write in these languages. It's essential. Uh, yeah, so as I said, text-to-speech, uh, language learning, applications, dictionaries, translation, and so forth. Uh, and we work currently with developing speech technology for, for three Sami languages, uh, North, Lula, and uh, South Sami. And for North Sami, we have um, already published uh, a TTS system. It was developed in 2015 already. And now our priority is to make a, a Lula Sami a DTS. And for South Sami, we are still in planning stage and uh, co collecting some data. Um, and we now focus on open source frameworks only. And we have tried uh, Takatron 2 uh, uh, last year. And then we have switched to fast pitch. And these are all available uh, from GitHub. And uh, for fast pitch, uh, the results have been good, even with less than five hours of uh, paired data. And I'm going to show uh, some samples really soon. And once we are uh, ready with this project, we expect to publish our uh, data and also the models as open source so that everybody can use them. And also some uh, user re ready software with integrations to the most used uh, operating systems. Um, yeah, so for the ESR, very quickly, we had only 34 hours of speech data, uh, approximately, from various sources, mainly from language banks of Norway and Finland. Uh, these, are, these were mostly spontaneous speech, uh, like interviews and such. But we also had some, we also used the DTS data uh, to also train the, the ASR model. And basically we put here everything we could find uh, so far, <clears throat> which is very little data if, if we compare it with English and uh, other uh, bigger languages. And the first experiment was done with the Wave 2 Vec2 model. And uh, one of our um, colleagues made actually a uh, master's thesis on this, um, and it's here on the link. Uh, it was fine-tuned from Facebook, uh, large XLSR53 model, and trained for 30,000 steps. Uh, it reached, at that point, 41% uh, word error rate and 0.5 loss, um, which is quite a big word error rate. Uh, but uh, still, the output was intelligible or not Sami, even with very noisy audio input, as I'm going to show very soon. And at the moment, we are sourcing and processing materials for all of these languages uh, to improve the models and build spoken corpora to further uh, develop stuff. So now, uh, some TTS samples. And the first one is North Sami, a uh, fast pitch model uh, with uh, Univnet. Uh, vocoder from Nemo. I forgot uh, the link here, but it's in GitHub anyway. Uh, trained for a thousand epochs, and uh, we only had uh, 3.5 hours uh, or uh, 3,600 utterances to train. So this this was very little data, and with this vocoder, uh, the results are actually really good. Um, and we also um, tried some HiFi GAN and GAN other these kind of uh, vocoders, but they were not so good. So I hope you can hear this. 
Raporta mielte uulet, mille lämmä ei käppi viit poatsotoalu ja ära äänä käyvä hämi ruossalasuodit sihki sihkaras tihti kohtoneäänä, mit se on sili saanu. Raporta mielte uulet, mille lämmä ei käppi viit poatsotoalu ja ära äänä käyvä hämi ruossalasuodit sihki sihkaras tihti kohtoneäänä, mit se on sili saanu. Ja, and then the lula sami one, which for which we had more data, so approximately eight hours and over 8,000 utterances, so this will sound a little bit better. Tivon, Sami tulle Charlin Vansak, ledal Asadubam, Stovies Orkningen, Tromso Universiteta. Tivon, Sami tulle Charlin Vansak, Ledal Asa Dovam, Stovies Orkningen, Tromso Universiteta. So these were TTS samples. Um, and then I have ASR samples uh, or like demonstrations for the VAV2 VEC2 model uh, I was talking about. Uh, I have like um, the prediction, target, and also translation for the red speech. Yeah, Tämä on karsikko sähti, mutta mä olin äänessä on poissui, tai oli chaukaleapa vantardetti kiesä ja kenspiitä. Ja te poissui, tämä on pieni karsikko sähti, mutta mä olin äänessä on poissui, tai oli chaukaleapa vantardetti kiesä ja kenspiitä. So, uh, as you can see, there are quite a lot of uh, spelling errors and uh, like all kinds of errors with like uh, word borders and stuff. Uh, but it's still quite easy to fix these errors with R. We have uh, spell checkers and grammar checkers in our tool uh, inventory. So this was already quite uh, useful for like a raw transcription of uh, completely untranscribed materials. Um, this is a spontaneous speech before I um, give Javier <laughs> the presentation. So. Kalaan tällä ahkuun nuohti, ahkulla nu räpmäjä, tätä muistella puokkiili ahkuita, että pala olmaporra rääsi leipsepaittiin, että se on kärjettä yhkipeille viehkaa metsämarjamaan jäveitsemen tai olmaporra rääsi, kalhan so kalhan so niin viehkaa. So this was quite a long sample, but in my opinion, this model worked better with this spontaneous speech even. Uh, which might be because most of the training material was also spontaneous speech. But this this was already, uh, we were super excited about uh, this result already. Um, yeah, so this was my part. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. I'll start sharing my screen then. You can see my screen now. Yes. Thank you, Katri, for this introduction to the Samian languages and the situation in, in Norway and all the great work your team has been doing for the last two decades. I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about the language technology work that we've been doing at the National Library of Norway and how that intersects with uh, extremely low resource language technology that um, that is needed for for supporting the assembly languages. Um, these days, the state of the art language models are basically reaching human level performance. And that's in essence due to the fact that there exist massive, like really massive language data sets that these models are using to pick up on cues and hints from the language. But these kind of massive language data sets are harder to collect for low resource languages. We leverage the collections of the National Library of Norway to, to create one of these massive language data sets for Norwegian, which we call the Norwegian Colossal Corpus data set. And on top of that, for the last three years, we have been building different kind of models, uh, for language models, uh, mostly. Uh, for example, the MB-BERT uh, model is an encoder-only model. BERT is probably all news by now, but this is still extremely useful 
for classification tasks, either at the token, word level, but also at the document or sentence level. The question is, uh, how can we make it work also for extremely low resource languages? Um, what is it that we need? So in order to be able to pursue this goal, we in the AI lab created this umbrella project called the uh, Sami language models in, in, in Norway, the Salmon project. And then we started uh, uh, specifying why do we want to do this? So first, there is a legitimate research interest in low resource and extremely low resource languages from the NLP community. And it's also part of our institutional duty as a public institution serving all the regions. So we thought that this could actually benefit uh, the, the society as, as a whole. The problem is, can we get competitive performance for assembly languages, given that historically, historically in the last 10 years, these language models have been developed using massive, uh, massive data sets. So there are two approaches here. One is leveraging multilingual language models and then somehow adjusting them to work with different languages that they have never seen. And the other approach is using cross-lingual transfer, which is similar in a sense, but the idea is that you use models trained on a language from the same language family, and then you try to adapt it to steer the model in, in a way that makes sense so it can be adapted to, to another uh, closer language, for example, uh, in this case, uh, Sabi. But what for? Uh, what are these models useful for? Well, first, uh, you can use the model for basically any task that is in the literature for sentiment analysis, assisting in handwritten text recognition, assisting in ASR, actually. So, for example, these WAF to back models can be improved by using a sort of uh, uh, a sort of engram statistical model called CANLM, which is based on the statistics of the raw plain text. Uh, we can also use this model for document classification, topic modeling, sentence similarities, scoring, question and answer, summarization, zero shot, all sorts of uses. Of uses. The initial cover, coverage that we devised was the mandatory set of languages that are spoken in Norway. That's Northern Sami, Lula, and Southern Sami. Ideally, if enough sources were found during the, the gathering of material in this project, we could also consider other Sami varieties, but th the main three would be Northern Lule uh, and Sami. There are others that are not already, like Arpala, Kildin, and Teir. Uh, maybe a possible interest could be Quems, uh, which is a language spoken also in, in Norway, but it's uh, probably mm, closer to, to, to Finnish that than closer to other Sami languages. That's true. And then, sorry? I just said that that's true, yeah. It's very yeah. similar to Finnish. And then after collecting the maximum amount of sources, uh, we thought about how can we do an evaluation of these models? How can we know if these models are any good? So for benchmarking, we thought about using name entity recognition, part of a speech, and then translation. The problem is that for these extremely low resource languages, these resources just don't exist, or they are very, 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 very limited. In terms of pre-training, that is the raw plain text, we started looking for sources. So we got the free corpus, which is maintained by Dibun, I think. That's uh, the biggest the biggest chunk of all the material written in, in Sami. And it's not only crawling the internet for web pages, but also downloading documents and extracting the plain text from Word documents or PDFs. That basically is the biggest chunk of all the, all the sources. But we also have some, some books uh, written in, in Sami at the National Library. And even though the OCR quality is not the best, because the language plugin of the OCR didn't support Sami at the time. Uh, it, they could be re-OCR to boost the quality of the OCR. And then we can also use the, the Sami books we have in the National Library. There is also the NRK SUPMI, which is a, 
a section of the national radio broadcasting in Norway that is specifically targeting the Sami speakers. And I think it's only Northern Sami mostly, but it's a good amount of text written in, in Sami. Then we also have the Sami Tinge, which is the, the Sami uh, parliament proceedings. Uh, they have a simultaneous translation of a speech and we haven't found yet transcribe data of those sessions, but um, maybe there is a way to get access to, to that data. We also found some languages in Malfred, which is the the public, uh, which is which is which are documents in the public domain created by public institutions in Norway. So there are there is also a Sami uh, containing there. There is a Northern Sami Wikipedia and United Sami Wikipedia. All of these sources could be used for, for doing uh, pre-training. And then there are also some newspapers that we can use. Uh, some of them are usually mixing the region, uh, one Sami language or a Sami language and another different language. Uh, but there are a couple that are only uh, written in one of the, of the Sami languages. And then of course, there is also the common crawl, which is a, some, a sampling of the entire internet, a periodic sample of the entire internet. And the extremely low resource languages are usually not very well represented because the language detectors they use don't work very well for these languages. So we have developed our own, our own language detectors uh, that account for uh, 12 different languages, including all the Sami languages and other languages from the Scandinavia. So the idea is to do a processing of a few of these dumps to be able to extract Sami language uh, with a good enough confidence to be considered as pre-training material. And then there are other smaller sources like a collection of Bibles that are written in, in Sami. For fine tuning, which is part of the kind of benchmark we can use. Good morning. I'm in the middle of something right now. I know. Can you please uh, shut the door? Sorry. And um, sorry, for, uh, for benchmarking, we thought about using the Wikian, which is a, a data set that is built using parallel corpora for, from the Wikipedia, but seems that Wikipedia for the assembly languages is very small. Maybe this is not really an option. And for translation, which could be also a possible benchmarking avenue, uh, we thought about using the multiple language pairs in the memory translation files developed by Yela, uh, Yela Techno. For speech, we have again the proceedings from Samitinga. We have radio broadcasts uh, from NRK. We have another radio stations, but there are no data. There is no data available for fine tuning. There is basically no, not a lot of subtitles uh, in our collection. We have only found a couple of video clips with titles, uh, text-to-speech data is also very limited. So we needed, uh, we needed a collaboration. That's why we got in touch with, uh, with a different team and then we started collaborating together. Uh, the idea of this uh, Sami Salbon project was to uh, deliver actionable data sets and specific language models targeting the, the Sami languages. So we thought about starting with BERT models, which we see as very useful, and then sequence to sequence, and then maybe moving on to speech models. But the problem is that after talking to them, uh, we realized that uh, automatic speech recognition was a much more needed kind of model, and they already have annotated data sets of almost 40 hours of annotated data. So the good news is that we have already done a lot of work in the ASR uh, realm of NLP. Uh, we just published a paper uh, showcasing waf to vec two models for Norwegian, Bokmal, and Nynorsk. We did this work a year ago, and finally the paper is now getting out. And then a few months ago, uh, Whisper model took the entire community by storm, and then we have to rethink everything we knew about ASR. Um, because we already knew some things about the ESR using waf 2 vec Now we have we had to relearn a little bit of how Whisper was doing things. So we compare our models with their models, which is a massive multilingual model that also included in the region. And in some cases, our small models were performing better. And then in other cases, their models were a bit better than ours. 
So we we decided to start doing more research on on the whisper models, and then try to add support for Sami. The problem with whisper is that it doesn't have support for Sami. So that is uh, the way in which whisper usually works is there is like a flag, like a special token that you add to to the input audio, so the model knows how to transcribe that in which language to transcribe that. And Sami was not part of that set of flags. And then the data set we have was also very small, so we decided to basically override everything the model knew about Finnish with data that we were providing in in Sami. Incredibly, we did uh, an aerial experiment of this, and it worked. We got a word error rate of almost 25, which is, again, is not great, but these scores uh, need to be taken with a grain of salt because uh, qualitatively, uh, they, they sometimes can be uh, good enough, even though the, the score at the quantitative level is not so good. So this is an example of the early experiment in the whisper model. As you can see, the kind of errors is almost the same for the read speech. But when we move on to the spontaneous speech, we start to get fewer errors and fewer uh, noticeable problems with the word uh, with the word uh, bound the boundaries and all of that. So what's next for the SAMI whisper models? Well, we have been doing a lot of research into training. So the idea is to scale up this using TPUs, which are accelerators, specific hardware for accelerators by Google. And we want to test different model size to speed up the inference, complement it with the TTS, um, maybe also experiment with some of the SAMI as well. Thank you so much. That's great. Thanks both to um, <clears throat> both of our presenters today. And before we move on to Neil, uh, are there any questions from folks in the audience for, about uh, this language technology that we've seen today? Feel free to raise your hand or to just uh, yell out either one. Do we have, I'm curious if we have other folks on the call who've worked with uh, any kind of uh, speech technologies that we've seen on the slides today? I know the, the BBC people probably have, but. Uh, one yeah, of the I'm questions gonna... I had for, oh, go ahead. Did I cut somebody yeah, sorry, off? I'm going to have to leave now, but yes. um, I will be glad to answer questions also via email. Yeah. Feel Great. Free. I'll do my best to answer questions yeah. as rest to catch. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Right. One question for Javier. We've seen some um, interesting work come out in the visual domain out of diffusion models. So these are some of the models that are behind stable diffusion, as the name implies, and Dolly and things like that. Do you think we might ever see interesting work in diffusion in the text-to-speech space? In the text-to-speech? Um, yeah, maybe. Um, in the end, you have all these ASR models, for example, what they do, they take they take the MEL spectrogram, yeah. so they transform the raw audio signal into basically an image, right? So there's really no reason why a stable diffusion model cannot be repurposed to work for ASR or, or TTS. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting time, and I think one of the things that we talk about at Stanford a little bit is that um, obviously, you know, OpenAI is a company about which people have many opinions, um, and they do many yeah. different projects. But one of the one of the interesting ways of of sort of distinguishing types of projects is that um, with the Whisper project, you can download these models. You can download the large model, um, or the mini model, whatever you want. Um, and that's different than the way that, for example, ChatGPT works, where with ChatGPT you can't download that model. Um, there are attempts at open source models. There's interesting work here on Stanford's campus with Llama and Alpaca. But it is interesting to think about what you guys in Norway were able to accomplish by taking a pre-trained model and playing around with it. It's an interesting way of thinking about these big deep learning projects is can you actually get access to the model? Can you uh, adjust the weights? Um, and I think that's, a, that's an interesting question to consider when we think about interacting with large language models like ChatGPT, which we cannot interact with really. Uh, versus some of these other models in which you can download and inflect. Um, obviously, you guys have been able to do some really great work. 
Yeah. Well, that's terrific. I, I know uh, folks have both um, Javier's and Katri's contact information. Um, so if you have any questions emerge, please um, please feel free to contact them. But thanks very much to both of you for that. Let me switch over to